In this video, we're going to compare some of the most popular mini circular saws on Amazon. We picked the top ones showing up there on Amazon's listing and said, let's get those. We bought them and now we're going to see how they stack up. Everyone I've talked to, everyone I've shown these saws to says, oh, those are for hobbies. Those aren't for serious woodworking. I had the same idea. I'll have to admit, I had the exact same idea when I first saw them. If you're talking mostly cutting plywood and one buys, these will do it. So let's take a look at them with an open mind and see really what we've got when we're talking about these small saws. And let's really put them through the paces and see what they can do. So this is what you get when you buy the high chink. It comes with a nice carrying case. Personally, I like that. I end up doing jobs over at my mother-in-law's, over at friends' houses. It's nice to be able to take it with me, okay? It comes with three blades. Now, it's the only one of the three saws that comes with three blades. The blade that's in it is a carbide tip blade. There's also a a high-speed steel blade, and there's a diamond dust blade, which is for ceramic. It has a fence that slides in a couple slots on the shoe here. Thumb screw for tightening up the fence, which is nice. You don't have to use any tools for that. What's really unusual about this particular saw when we compare it to the others is that it doesn't have your typical blade guard that you expect to find on a circular saw. Rather, the blade guard goes all the way around the saw, and to cut, you actually change the angle of the shoe. So it's got a dual trigger system here. One is for power and the other is for releasing the shoe. I'll have to say though, it does take some getting used to. Uh, the first several times I used the saw, I had trouble coordinating those two triggers. It took a little while to get used to it. Once I got used to it, it was great. Now, this one is a three and three eighths inch blade. So that gives us a maximum cutting depth on here on their, their gauge, it says 25 millimeters. The next saw I wanna look at is the Works. The Works, like the Hachinka, is a quartered model. So we plug it into work. The major difference we find between these two saws is this has got a four and a half inch blade. What that means is that this saw will cut through a two by four. That's about the maximum you can cut with it. Blade depth is set here on the back. It adjusts the shoe and it tops out at one and three quarters of an inch, which is just about right for cutting through a two by four. You want there maybe a quarter of an inch of blade extending beyond. The biggest difference between this and say a seven and a quarter inch circular saw is it's scaled down and the way the handle's set up. Instead of a pistol grip sort of a handle on the back side of it right here, you've got this extended handle and that's where the motor is, all right? The shoe on this one is adjustable up to 45 degrees so you can make an angle of cut. Of course, that's gonna reduce your depth of cut, right? So it's a pretty basic tool, but then again, we're talking basic tools here. We're not talking high dollar tools. I have yet to see how well it cuts. I like the idea of being able to cut through a two by four with one. We'll see how well it does that. Our third saw is the Wen cordless. And being a cordless, it does come with the charger for the battery, which is a two amp hour battery. I don't know if there's a larger battery available. Perhaps it's an aftermarket one. In some ways, it almost looks like a twin to the works in the design of the, the blade guard here, the shoe, the fence. Uh, the fence on the other one was silver colored and the shoe was silver colored. This, this was black, but they look very, very similar. You've got a, a angle adjustment here for your shoe, allowing you to go up to one and three quarters of an inch of depth of cut. We have the 45 degree angle bevel on the, the shoe so we can cut up to 45 degrees into our material. There's a lot of similarities between all these saws. One thing this saw has that the other two don't is that it has a laser guide. Now laser guides are something they've been putting on saws for several years now with the idea of helping you cut straighter. The big, big difference with this particular saw is that it's a cordless one. So I'm interested to see how this compares to the works in overall power. Is this gonna cut as well as that one? One of the first things we wanna check on these tools is whether or not they meet their specifications. These two have a rated no low to speed of 4,500 RPM and this one at 20 or 4,100. So I'm using a digital tachometer to check them. We'll check each one of them a couple times just to be sure. 46.95, so it's beating its rated speed. 5,310. So I got 46.25 twice, so we'll call that at 46.25, had a, with a rated speed of 4,500, so that's pretty good. I've got the, the Wen, which is the cordless. 43.45, 42.92, 43.95, 43.95. So it's varying a little bit, which I guess that's not real surprising considering it's a cordless tool. The battery is fully charged, but it looks like it's the average is probably about 4,450. And let's take a look at the wicks. Works, I mean, I'm sorry. 4,707. 3,371. 3420, we're all over the map here. I suspect the problem here might be the blade is uh, very highly polished and it's reflective, and this digital tachometer uses a reflective tape to try and 
read the speeds. One of the important factors for comfort in using a tool is how much noise it produces. And power tools tend to produce a lot of noise. So one of the things we want to see is how noisy are these tools. Now I've got a, a sound pressure meter here, measures in decibels. Sound level here in my workshop seems to be 28 decibels, okay? That's our background noise. And I'm measuring at a distance of 24 inches because that's how far it is from my hand to my ear when I'm using the tool. Okay, the Hachinka comes in 95.4 decibels. The Wen comes in at 96.1 decibels, so they're pretty close. The works is a little bit quieter at 90.7 decibels. The weight of the tool is another contributing factor to how comfortable it is to work with. So that's something we want to consider here. And we're going to start with the Hachinka again. And this comes in at 4 pounds, 8.8 .8 ounces. The Wen, which has got to deal with the battery weight as well, so that fighting against it, we could say. And find a way to set it on the scale. It comes in at a hefty 5 pounds, 8.4 ounces. And the works is the lightest one at 4 pounds, 1.6 ounces. I had wanted to test the tools for vibration because vibration is a major factor when it comes to fatigue when using tools. Well, I got it here and I tried using it on these tools and it would not read. At first, I thought there was something wrong with the meter, but the meter was reading temperature because it'll give you both the vibration and the temperature. Just to give you an idea, this is a pheasant feather. Because it's rather wobbly, this would amplify any vibration we see in the tool. I'm just going to use this saw. It's the same for all these. We get the same results. And I'm holding it with my hand. And if, this, if there's vibration, what we should see is the end of this feather moving quite a bit. And as you can see, once it started up and it got over that initial shock of moving, the feather settled right down and hardly moved at all. And it would be the same result with any of these three saws because I've tried it with all three. So vibration is not an issue. The real crux of the issue is how well do these saws cut? So I'm gonna try cutting various different materials with them to see how well they do. Now, the first thing I'm gonna start with is just a plain old two by four. I've put the fence on all three of the saws and set it for five centimeters, mostly because I wanna ensure that I'm making a straight cut. A crooked cut will make the saw maybe kick back, maybe bog down. So I wanted a nice clean cut. So the first saw here is the works. That went through there without any problem. Now I've got the Wix cordless. And finally, the Hachinka. So as we can see, they all went through that very easily. Even the Hachinka, although it didn't cut all the way through, we're cutting something thicker than the saw is designed for, and yet it didn't bog down at all. So that was pretty impressive. What happens with the other two saws if, like the Hachinka, we try and cut through material that's too thick for them? Now these are designed for cutting through material that's up to a 2x4, but what about a 4x4? Okay, so the 4x4 wasn't much of a challenge to the either of the saws. They were all able to cut through it without bogging down. And that's what I was really looking for is does the saw bog down going through that thicker piece of wood? Okay, so a thicker piece of wood didn't phase it. What about a harder piece of wood? This is some red oak. It's actually kind of dovetail shaped. This is some leftover from a chair I made. It's an inch and a quarter thick and about three inches wide. Let's see how the saws do on this. Okay, so the Wix saw uh, bogged down just a touch going through there. I heard it slow down a little bit. The Wix, the cordless one, didn't slow down at all. And as you all heard, the Hachinka did stop going through there. I honestly can't tell you if that was the saw or if it was my finger slipping on the trigger. So I'm gonna try it one more time. I guess it must've been my finger because it went through it fine that time. It seemed to me it slowed down just a little bit, but not really hardly anything noticeable. I already cut through aluminum tube with the Hachinka, and the reason I did that is because it came with three blades, and that's one of the things they claim it can do. Now, the other two saws don't say anything about it, but they do have carbide tip blades in them. So it seems to me that if the Hachinka can cut through some two inch aluminum tubing, these other two saws ought to be able to do it too. So let's give it a try. A little bit of trouble keeping it straight there, but that's me, not the saw. It didn't have any trouble cutting through it. Let's try the cordless one. 
Yep, no problem with that. So we know that they'll cut through aluminum. We know that they'll cut through wood, but how fast will they cut through it? All the saws have done really good so far with all the materials we've tried to cut, but I kind of feel like we haven't really pushed them to the limit. Not only that, but I really haven't seen anything that tells me one saw cuts faster than the other saw. Now, all three of these saws have 24 tooth carbide tip blades. So at least in that sense, it's apples to apples. The Hachinka is a smaller diameter blade, so it would seem the others have an advantage in that sense. Of course, speed, the rotational speed has a factor too. So I was trying to come up with a way of really testing them and seeing how well they're gonna cut through a board, pushing it as hard as I could. And this is what I've come up with. Now this jig here, or this sled I've come up with, is gonna pull a piece of wood past the blade. Okay, the saw is gonna be sitting here and I'll be holding it because I have to hold it to keep the trigger operated. And the, the, the pulling is done by a weight that's hanging off the end of my workbench down there. It's 5.6 pounds. And so we're getting the same consistent amount of pull. And I wanna see what we're after is how fast will it cut through, okay? Or will it make it through? Maybe it'll bog down in the middle of it. Well, it had a little trouble, but it got through. Let's try that again. Same saw, another block of wood, same kind of wood. All right, it ca got caught there towards the end of that one. That's right at the end of the cut. All right, so now we're gonna try the works. Now it's a little bigger saw, a little bigger saw blade. Same test. Okay, that was a little slower, but it was a much smoother cut off to say the edges of this one are kind of chewed up. Now we got to realize that when we're talking about how well these saws are doing, we're also talking about how well the saw blades are doing. And I'm using the blades that were shipped with the saws, okay? It seems to me that this saw is a smoother cut, or saw blade is a smoother cutting saw blade than the one on the Hachinka. But at the same time, it didn't seem as aggressive going through the wood. We'll give this one another try too. The blade got caught in the wood. It got about an inch in, and that's as far as it went. Let's back it off and give that another try. Same piece of wood. It's got a head start because it's got that one inch of cut in there. So it made it through that, but after it had a problem. And finally, we've got our cordless. We'll see how it does. Okay, we're having the same problem we had on that last piece. The material's coming at the saw blade so quickly that it jammed up. So I'm gonna back it off and give it another chance. I gave the other one another chance. By the way, I had this same problem before with the Hachinka when I was using the bungee cord, but that was move, pulling the wood much faster than what we're doing right now. Okay, here we go. Two, two jams. Uh, one just isn't going to go through that piece of wood. So of the three of them, the one that cut the best was actually the little Hachinka. That's kind of surprising. That's not what I would have expected. The WEN being a battery unit, okay, a cordless unit, they tend to be a little lower power. We see that demonstrated. Now, you might be asking, yeah, but those are low dollar tools. What if you had a Makita there or a Milwaukee there or the Walt there? What would that do? Well, that's a good question. I would say that probably they would have a little more power than these. But remember, we're, we're looking at both power of the saw and the configuration of the saw blade. And the way the saw blade is made can make a huge difference. The angle of the teeth, how they're coming up against that wood, the size of the gullet for how well it can clear the sawdust out. There's several factors there in the design of the blade that could make a difference in how well these saws can cut. But I think we've made the point, at least, that we can cut through this material, at least most of the time. And I'll have to admit that the way I'm doing this, I'm attacking that material much, much faster than I would ever do if I was cutting by hand. Remember, I've already cut through two by four oak with this, with all three of these saws, and they had no problem. So what I've done is I've pushed the saw to the limits. And we see that we've had some problems. Actually, all three of the saws have had this problem of when it hits that wood, it doesn't have enough power to power through on that first bite. The Hachinka did it fine with this plywood 
and with the five pound weight. When it didn't do it fine is when I had the bungee cord attached, which was giving it a whole, the wood much more velocity, okay? It did fine going through both times, but I'll have to say it was chattering a bit going through. So there are limits to these tools. Now, that doesn't mean that they're horrible and that doesn't mean we, we shouldn't use them. I've cut through three quarter inch plywood before with the, the Hitchinka. It did bog down on me. On the flip side of that coin, I can see a lot of times when being able to take a small saw and use it to do a small job uh, would be very, very useful. It saves time, it saves effort. If you've got to do an overhead cut, if you've got to do something where, where holding a heavy saw would be a problem, having these saws would be great. So I leave you with this and uh, hope you've at least got some insight on these saws and uh, we'll see you next time when we'll find something else to test. Have a good one. Make some sawdust.